Hello guys and girls and welcome to episode 25 of the VR Inside podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show that is live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live at 4pm in Europe, 3pm in the UK and 9am in Central US. If you missed the podcast you can catch up with the whole show as I re-upload it every Sunday on my own YouTube channel, Virtual Reality Oasis. Or check out the audio only version which is available on Google Play Music, iTunes and on SoundCloud. If you've got any questions, comments or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. So let me introduce you to this group of passionate VR enthusiasts. Up first, this guy likes nothing more than to take a spin around the block on his hover bike, in VR of course, and it is our man, Nathy. How you doing dude, you alright? I'm doing all righty tighty, yes. Hover, hover bike? <laughs> yeah, I saw you were playing, uh, was it, uh, GPT Trials, uh, the hover bike uh, type game? Yeah. Okay. You spy! <laughs> you spy! <laughs> Why did you, 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 you exposed me! Yeah, I, I did, I, I did uh, uh, ride a hover bike in VR. Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty yeah, legit. I keep, a, I keep a, a tight eye on all of yeah. you. Yeah, uh, yeah just, I just, just noticed. So aware. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, this next guy, he's uh, recently just become a detective and is working furiously to solve a virtual reality murder. And that is our resident rowdy, the rowdy guy. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's going to take a long time, I think, before I figure <laughs> out who did it because I get distracted way too quickly. You know, PD told me that you can actually follow where the umbrella goes. So I already figured out what I'm going to be doing like the next time that I'm going to be playing this. I'm going to live stream it tomorrow probably because I have the feeling that this is a game that doesn't need like a lot of editing, but it's a very interactive kind of experience. And I think it would be cool to see like the audience with that as well to hear what they, uh, what they would like me to go and uh, go after. So yeah, it's, it's a really cool game. I like that one. But yeah, I'm good. I'm good, man. Cool, cool. Good to hear it. Good to hear it. Next up, this guy likes to face his demons head on, hanging out in the dread halls. It is in top five. <laughs> How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, just nice and uh, relaxed week of VR. Yeah. You know, so uh, now this week was particularly good. I did a uh, bucket list thing for me, which was appear on the front page of Twitch. So that was uh, oh, congrats, that was man. For me. I saw that. Congrats. congrats. I also saw something else, Zoom. What's I you? saw you dancing uh, brilliantly. Uh, <laughs> yes. let's, let's come on to that in a little bit. I would like to hear more about this myself. Mm. So uh, that is our crew. And uh, last but no means least, myself, uh, the host of the show, the bearded bowl guy, Mike from Virtual Reality Oasis. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about hands-on impressions with the Vive Pro, the Fit360 neckband, which is a 360 camera, and you can actually learn how to become a DJ in VR. We've also mm. got some small news topics for you as well, but let's start this off with finding out what everyone has been up to this week. So I'm really curious to hear about uh, Zim's dancing antics, so please Zim, tell us what you've been up to, what you've been experiencing in VR this week. All right, right. I've, I've had a heavy week, Mike. It's been a, It's been... Probably one of my heavier weeks. I've, I've hit it quite a lot. So I'm just going to buzz over what I did. I'll skip over some things. What you're talking about is air tone. I'll come right back right. to that. So <clears throat> the other things I did were, um, thanks to the key, by the way, was Cube VR or Sayub VR. I don't know how to Sa pronounce Sa it. It's like a Minecraft ah, yes. clone, which has the coolest feckin' tree felling mechanic ever. You literally, you're here, you're hacking with your axe into the side of the tree, and you have to wiggle the feckin' axe out. And you've got the like the tactile feedback in the Vive wand and all that, so that was awesome. Uh, so that's like a Minecraft thing, and it is literally Bloom Fest, like down the Bloom settings when you get into that one. Um, I yeah. did bust. Did you like it though? Did I like it? I actually did. Yeah. I was um. Oh, okay. I was pleasantly surprised for such a small dev team how mm -hmm. well it performed. The devs actually contacted me after and said, "Well, I've never seen it perform so bad for somebody," but I actually thought it was the opposite because I was involved in the. Mm -hmm in the early days of Minecraft, and anyway, I don't want to go into too uh, much detail here, because uh, coming yeah. back, so we did a few other things, Bus Driver Simulator 2018, uh, which is literally <laughs> drive around a Russian town, picking people up and dropping them off to a timer. Like, you have to, wow. you get penalized if you pick them up a minute early or a minute late or whatever. It's actually pretty so decent. What you're actually saying is that VR has finally has, like, its killer app now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say that just yet i wouldn't say that just yet. it wasn't bad though if you like euro truck you might want to look at it but um it's pretty rough and the textures are all anyway i won't go into it too too deep um we played obviously the brass tactics competitor tournament this week as well that was freaking fantastic um good on to everybody who uh who played that um 
Uh, Air Tone was was definitely another highlight of the week. So that was the it's like a J pop. Uh, a J pop day. Hey, Matt Rowdy's <laughs> his, his Rowdy um, showing a little clip of uh, Zim's crazy dance moves. So, if um, there is ever an advertisement not to do drugs, it's this video. That's what it looks like. <laughs> it really <laughs> makes you. It makes you Sexy. feel like a J pop queen when you're playing because they have these like lines, and you're supposed to like grab onto the lines and then follow them around. So while you're doing that, while you're dancing and you're bashing things, and yeah, it makes you look totally wacko. But uh, it was so fucking good fun to be honest. It's, it's a quality <laughs> title. I think the price is probably pretty high on it. So a lot of people will say barrier for entry. That's not for me. But if you like beat me beat games, it's pretty decent. Um, I'd say that it it does the whole kind of weird Japanese thing a little bit. You're this big fat robot, and there's this pretty VR chat looking model lady who's like talking you through stuff. It's weird. Yeah, I had the impression it had like a storyline or something in between the, the dance things, like which was like really weird. Totally useless. Yeah, totally useless. Yeah. So there's a bunch of stuff kind of shoehorned in there that's not needed, but the gameplay is really good. So uh, there yeah, was that. And then there's two that. or three other things. I played Spark for the first time ever, um, which is unfortunately oh. the product of CCP, the, the development studio that is kind of in a downward spiral. They did uh, yeah. E-Valkyrie as well. But the quality I found of that one was really good. Problem is no one's fucking playing it, and yeah. I'm sure it's dead to rights at this yeah. point. Um, yeah. So that was kind of fun. That was like a racquetball uh, type game. And I think where did you play that one? Spark. What's that? Where did you play that one? Oh, just uh, online. I mean, I just but where? I, I, on on what, what headset, I mean, sorry. What headset? Uh, must have been... Must have been Rift. Yeah, it was Rift. Oh, okay. Okay. I think the problem with Spark is it came out like long after Lone Echo and Lone Echo had already done it better and that was the, the unfortunate thing with that game, you know, because it had potential had Lone Echo not been there first, you know, Echo Arena, I mean. Quality though. I mean, like the, yeah, the yeah, it was good. models yeah. and everything. I, I think what they did was they did this kind of like closed beta thing for a long mm. time. People like I think PSVR yeah. Frank and a few others were doing it and were really yeah, liking it that behind was... the doors and then they waited until, as you said, Echo Arena took the stage. And yeah. they, they released like mm, two, three months after. and Because I remember PlayStation pushing this quite a lot. So yeah, they, yeah they, I, I've been yeah, at their yeah. launch event and uh, they, they didn't really put that much attention into like the, the whole launch of Spark. More like the, yeah. the E-Valkyrie the expansion yeah. they had back then. But, mm. uh, back yeah. the wrong horse, I'd say. You know, it just was... It's unfortunate because you see something that's obviously developers like put passion quality and time mm. and thought process and how the control system worked. Um, yes. I, I'd love to have gone head to head with somebody, but there's literally nobody playing it. So <laughs> that's the, it's one of those dead to right games, unfortunately. And then the last thing from, or there's two things that, I, that finished off my week. Apex Construct, uh, all of you guys who got flown out to um, Sweden and that, I finally got to catch that on PSVR. I thought it was, um, the environments in that and the start of the game are really, really strong, like visuals and sound and introduction yeah. and all that. And then, unfortunately, it's the kind of game that I'd say you probably want to wait and play it on a platform that isn't PSVR because it's very much dependent on the 360 uh, degree freedom. And I found in certain, it, it gets tough. Uh, and even playing on normal difficulty, I found that it was like holding me up. Um, and then the last thing I did, which oh. any racers need to know about, I, I trialed something called, it's an Assetto Corsa mod that one dev is working on, which procedurally generates a rally track and then you race it. Um, and he's he's done a, a server timing mechanism. So you run the courses on an online server, records your times, and then you're on a leaderboard that's live. Like with, within 30 minutes of me running the laps, the times were up automatically. Just really impressive. I mean, the most anyone who plays a set of course and that stuff, do you play mod tracks? Like tracks that you know any one of us could have created. And then you know this the quality of this, which is from a procedural engine is better than the majority of those. I, I don't know how he's done it. It's interesting. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's, that, that's You've had week. A, it's been a very you, busy week. <laughs> you have had a busy week. Yeah. So let's uh, kick this over to Rowdy. What about you, dude? What have you been up to this week? Yeah, well, I've played that uh, detective game, uh, The Invisible Hours, per recommendation Hours. Of, uh, yeah. of Zim and uh, Paradise UK. Uh, it's uh, for me. I'm. I'm. It's. It's a, re a revelation. This one. It's really. I, I like murder mysteries already in general. I watched them when. I, when I was a kid, I used to watch these kind of things with my mom. Uh, and uh, she actually found this video not because I sent it to her, but she actually found it on YouTube. Uh, probably was, <laughs> it was. It was recommended. She started watching it, and she texted me today saying. Uh, 
Who did it? <laughs> <laughs> she wants to know. So I don't know yet. You need to watch the next episode. I told her. So, <laughs> nice uh, one, yeah. Uh, she, Make she, sure you she subscribe, forced like me. as well. Yeah, <laughs> she actually forced me to go and stream it tomorrow so that she can uh, figure out more what is going on, which is kind of funny. That is cool. And yeah. then uh, I played uh, Apex Construct. I kind of agree with Zim on there um, because the 360 in that game is for me at least uh, very important. But um, that's also probably because me, Zim, Nathy, we all are so used to playing with Oculus and with playing with uh, with Vive that which is not always forward facing, which actually yeah. uses a lot of 360. That I, I I never use like any of those like thumbsticks to like turn around. So to yeah. do that in a game is for me uh, much more of an effort. But I've seen people like PSVR Frank playing that game as it was like tch, like they've never done anything else before. Yeah. So yeah, that, that is something to take into account. Uh, I played Brass Tactics, got thrown out in the, in the first round, which was great. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, I played uh, one more game, but I haven't uploaded it yet. I still need to, it's still an embargo on that one, I think. Oh. So, uh, oh, not, not sure I can talk about it. Ooh. Mm. Juicy. Please check the channel. Be <laughs> sure to follow, like, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug. What about you, Nathy? What have you been playing this week, dude? I uh, played uh, three games. I played Esper. The first one, after Mike ah. was talking about it, I was like, hmm, maybe I should just go back and, uh, and see. Yeah, have fun. A little short, but I mean, it, it totally blends into uh, Esper 2, so you can keep on playing if you want to. And it's yeah. like a, a, a pack now you can buy an Oculus Home, as far as I know. So it in is, the end, yeah. you buy both games anyway. Uh, yeah. But that was fun. Um, I also played um, uh, Ground Runner Trails again. And uh, it's, a, it's an average game. It, it it's fun. It's a it's a hover bike where you're like uh, riding on and it's going super fast and you get guns and you can shoot. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's it, it's it's the same what I had with Apex Construct because I also played that one. Um, the start is very nice and it's it's very action packed and you're like, wow, this is so epic. And then it starts to get a little repetitive and you're doing the same stuff and you're. You're always having to use the same tools and okay with Apex Construct you have a bow and you can upgrade it later on But I noticed it wasn't enough to keep me playing forever mm. um, But that's what I played so for me Esper was like uh, Like they reinvented the game pretty much mm. with like touch I think it can it totally matches with with the times we are in at this moment and yeah. with with ground runner I had a little bit of that DK2 vibe, you know, where I was going back to, I wouldn't say it's not an Oculus Share title, but it really felt like the good old days without any rules. I was getting a little sick from time to time because it was going so fast, but I really enjoyed really? it. Um, yeah, because you don't have a physical body, you're not attached. Like I like to have, like I was an E Valkyrie as well, oh. where you have like a body and you can see your arms. And this one was just me as a floating head. Um, on so the bike, that was yeah, kinda, I played it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I actually agree agree with you totally, Nathy, on this one because I think the the visuals, the sound, like they did a lot of things right, but the upgrade mechanism mm. is just totally worthless. Like they literally <laughs> forced you to upgrade all the categories, and it's like, well, what was the point of that then? Uh, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm actually. Yeah, so you can you bike. can upgrade your your hover bike, and it, it doesn't really give you much info on what you really do. Like you can spend uh, credits on power. But what is power then? You know, what does that mean? Is it going yeah. to be... <laughs> so you want to see the stats you want to have, like... And it also gives you a certain uh, level of satisfaction if you read, like, oh, you, you got power, like, oh, you're going super fast. You know, if you can read it all and then upgrade it, it feels so much better. But here it's like, boom, you press the button, you don't hear any sound of you upgrading at all. It's like... Yep. Okay, yeah. is that it? And no one is telling you, well, congratulations, you bought something. It's not, nothing happens. But yeah. <laughs> uh, so I would say Esper, uh, very, very nice. Um, and and uh, Apex Construct and also Ground Runner average games, I would say. Yeah. Okay. Do you think you'll go back to play Esper 2? Maybe. I did play a big yeah. part of that. Um, and Apex Construct, I think that, yes, if you got a um playstation vr and a vive or a rift then i would just go for the pc version if Wait. you've got a playstation you should be fine as rowdy said right. if you're used to that it's cool but yeah. i was getting so frustrated by the fact that i had to press buttons to turn my view around instead of right. me just turning my body i'm so used to but that's, just turning that's around all the time well. like snap rotation right yeah, yeah snap really, rotation but also smooth uh, uh snap yeah. so that that's right, in right. There. Yeah, well, and, and also and also locomotion. There are locomotion options, so that's is there a free nice, but... is there because I couldn't work it out, and people were saying that it does have free motion. Mm. 
but I didn't find it. I what I did like, and I haven't seen this elsewhere, is where you hold the button, you hold and swipe, and then that turns you whatever percentage mm -hmm. around, and right. that was all right. Like I, I can yeah. see how what Rowdy said was a console gamer will have no trouble with that. Like someone no. who's accustomed to PSVR, so it's not a bad game. It's actually no. it felt very Half Life One to me in terms yeah. of the I had, story. I, I had the same impression. Yeah. Yeah. So before I, I end up on, on, on Apex Construct, the game has been built from the ground up for teleportation. They had to later on implement a, a walking locomotion. Right. So you will notice the, notice a few parts where you just get stuck or you can't yeah. move and you need to teleport over a certain uh, object or something yeah. that is on a higher level. So yeah. Is that because yeah. of like uh, community feedback? Is that what the community wanted? Do you think, and that's why they had to? Implement they they it? were pretty late with that. Yeah, when right. we were going to Sweden, they already said like, oh, we we just implemented this. It's not really ready yet, and and yeah. it's still not working great. I would say I got stuck a lot. But hey, uh, right. if you want if you want to know more about that one, watch my review of like an hour long. Enjoy. <laughs> the one thing I was gonna say. Get your popcorn out. That. Apex yeah. Construct. One thing was really cool. They, f well, uh, it's cool and awful at the same time. The DOS mm. interaction system felt so Fallout where you have to type yeah. in DOS yeah. commands to yeah, actually that's... find stuff out to then yeah. like unlock a passcode for a door or whatever. Really cool game mechanic. I love that. Yeah, and also but because there are things... Not with the move there. controllers because it's, like, yeah. it's like having the fattest finger in the world to try and press the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So also, that, that is cool because you go back to like certain areas to go and figure out what yeah. that DOS command is. On yeah. the computer or whatever. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that game performs when it comes to PC. You know, like how uh, they I, implement yeah, the well, locomotion and everything else well, on PC. We we managed to get a shot at that already. Yeah? Oh right, so in, you know. In, in Sweden, yeah. Okay, okay. So do you we know when that's coming out on PC? No. Soon. Uh, we <laughs> should know that, but I kind of forgot. I, I wanted okay. to say yeah. it, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. But oh, okay, fair enough. Fair but enough. soon. But it's, it's soon, right? I guess soon. <laughs> yeah. From okay. what I know, Mike, it's um month or something a month and a okay. half from what i've heard publicly so i, I okay. wasn't on the other side track <laughs> right right so uh yeah oh, this week uh, i have it i have it i have it okay uh, go on the 28th of march it says it on the on the steam store so oh. in, a, in roughly three weeks from now okay yeah. nice so there you go you can check it out when it comes to pc and hopefully it'll run better maybe on the pc version uh than the psvr version um, so this week, uh, a bit like you guys, I've been playing Brass Tactics. Uh, we entered a tournament, a Brass Tactics tournament, where a load of uh, Twitch streamers and YouTubers got together and played together. It was uh, it was kind of fun to to all play each other a bit competitively and like kind of like egg each other on at the beginning, like yeah, I'm gonna take you down, and then <laughs> like actually like have a fight and sort of live stream it as well. Because uh, I'm new to live streaming, so uh, it was it was interesting and, and different for me as well. So it was a lot of fun to be a part of it. Um, obviously, you run. You won your first round, right, uh, Zim? Against yeah. Frisk. Frisk, yeah, who's yeah, a yeah. I, I Twitch streamer. The floor with her. I literally sent her a message saying, "Good luck, idea," because you can win the headsets for your community or whatever. I thought yeah. she was going to come in and just cream me because I I knew I was only going to get like a day's preparation, but yeah. I managed it, so I was good. Nice. One thing I'll say, the, I don't know if you found this, Mike, because you seem to gel with this game really, really well. And yeah. I do like a lot of the things they have in it. The community was so nice. Like they yeah. really just it was like. One dude in particular stayed with me and 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 played with me and taught me tips and tricks for like twenty minutes after the match was finished. Yep. He just stayed there and he just watered me around the map. He like talked me through the different control points yep. and strategies. And I was like, fucking the big thing it's missing right now, tell me if I'm blind. Is there a play again with this person button? No, there isn't. And and yeah, I agree. Like I had some great experiences with members of the community as well. And they really helped me out with some tips. You know, I was getting some last minute practice in before the tournament. And some guy was like, oh, these are the areas you want to capture in this map. This is the kind of focus you want to do. Use this unit. It just got buffed. And he was giving me loads of advice, which was great. Yeah. yeah. But like, uh, you know, unfortunately, you, you lost against uh, Caleb, right? Oh, my uh, God. Because that guy I, is I, like I, a machine. I had, he's, an, he's, he's very good. I actually yeah, was quite neck and neck for the first half. The problem was... When I had, I had about 40 minutes spare because I beat Frisk quite quickly and we were the first ones to finish off. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Twitch King. Uh, but the uh, <laughs> but the issue is I practiced the wrong map 
I practice oh, the right, wrong right. map, and then we yeah. go in, and, and and Caleb's like, "No, buddy, we got to do the other map." And I was like, "Shit!" And it's a totally yeah, yeah. difficult sure, map. Sure, that's that that's that's, that's, that's what they all say. That's what they oh, all yeah. say. Yeah, I'll use that excuse <laughs> as well because, like, uh, you know, like obviously Rowdy went up against Cass and Cherry first, and and lost, and then it was me up against Cass and Cherry, and I was like, "Yeah, okay." And then like they came in and just like absolutely destroyed me with a, a set of dragons that I completely underestimated. Uh, you know, was going to destroy my castle. So yeah. I lost but uh, they made it to the final and fought against uh, reality check vr obviously caleb and uh, caleb ended up winning the whole tournament so uh, yeah it was a cool competition to be a part of anyway it was a lot of fun uh, apart from that, I also played uh, Internal Light, which is quite a, a small sort of indie game. Not many many people know about it. It's made by a really small team, um, but it's kind of like an escape room experience. Probably about 30 minutes long in total. Um, but it kind of reminded me of the Saw movies, because you wake up in a room and you're shackled to a bed and you have to kind of like uh, break out of that room and then you start sort of discovering other rooms and different puzzles and traps. Uh, and there's a scene in it as well, like uh, I don't know if you've seen the Resident Evil movie, but um, where you're in this room with a a corridor and these lasers, lasers start coming yeah. to try and yeah, cut you yeah, in yeah, half yeah, yeah. you have to like kind of duck them and move around and then they all come at the same time towards you and you're like oh, freaking like, out like yeah like a proper like web of it you're like, like oh man awesome. I'm just gonna get creamed yeah so that was kind of cool and like it's a really cheap game like I think it's like 3 99 in British pounds like 4 mm. US dollars only 30 minutes long but it's kind of interesting yeah. and uh, it's kind a cool of thing that, like I played it myself too I totally forgot about it um, yeah. It was kind of dark. That's the only issue it has. It was it's way extremely too dark. dark. Yeah, and like <laughs> I, I contacted the devs actually about it being so dark, and they said, "Oh, we might have a build that's a little bit lighter, that's <laughs> yeah. better for videos." <laughs> yeah. But it turned out like it didn't really really work very well. So I just ended up doing the bumping up the brightness a little bit. Yeah. But in that video, I kind of role played as like if I was stuck in that situation rather than just doing like a playthrough normally. Yeah, so it's kind of a bit different for me as well. But yeah, it was interesting to check that one out. Uh, but that is what we've been up to this week in terms of games and VR experiences. So let's jump into some quick news, uh, which are some little snippets from the news this week. So the first up is um, the Oculus Santa Cruz prototype uh, headsets have started to be uh, shipped to developers. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I found it quite surprising that this is happening so early. Like it feels like it's still quite early yet. But um, it must be that the timing is right if they want to get developers making games ready to launch later on this year before Christmas, I would imagine. I don't know what your yeah. guys' uh, thoughts yeah, are on that. Yeah, I think that's a good move, indeed. Just like you said, like if you want to make sure that there are titles that are going to be available at launch, then I yeah. think this is the right time to start, mm. uh, to start getting the developers yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's never too early to ship out prototypes yeah. for that reason. Yeah. Because if if you see how some games are in development for like maybe a year or two or even longer, and mm. then they suddenly come out and they are one of the best ones you've ever played, then I think they they need all the time to develop to cook yeah. a nice I, title. Yeah, I just wonder what it's like on the developer side. I mean, think about all the headsets that are out there. You've got a myriad of you know, Windows Mixed Reality headsets. Oh, yeah. You've got, all the, you've got mm. the main three competitors. You've got Go coming out. You've got Santa Cruz on the horizon. You've got the Vibe Pro. It's a bit overwhelming. It, yeah. it is. I mean, I'm sure we'll go into this a little bit later because we're going to talk Vibe Pro, but you've got resolution to consider, you know, performance of your of your game across all these headsets. Yeah. It's a big deal. And I actually yeah. think that then I think, from then a I dev think perspective, that, like, that must uh, be quite overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. But then I think it's, it's good for, like, the companies like HTC and Oculus that already have an established kind of brand in that scene that they can reuse their SDKs, they can update them uh, and work with there. While for a, a new company to come in there, which probably bring their own new uh, SDK to it, or uh, mm. it's going to be a little bit harder, I think, to oh, convince yeah. developers to, uh, to to use that one then as well. Plug in. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think an average yeah. dev don't even has like the, the man or girl power to even uh, work on so many headsets at the same time. Mm. And like, you know, you really need to kind of choose now, it feels like, to... Yeah. Some especially, of them will have to, I guess. Especially VR devs, they tend to be like uh, small little studios, you know, that are really dipping their toes in and tr really sort of like, you know, experimenting with VR, you know? So what, One of the things I wanted to say <clears> about the Santa Cruz, because it's, uh, it, it's there in the video that we're doing, and some people who are, you know, maybe not as close to VR as we're all saturated in, is about inside-out tracking with the Santa mm. Cruz. I mean, the magic with this headset is it's six degrees of freedom, so you can move your head around, you can move your hands around and all that, but there's, there, there's no sensors. The sensors are on the headset looking out at your hands. That's right. And the yeah. coolest thing about this, and the, the people who I know who've, who've actually had the chance, the first person to check this out, is that even far back behind your head, 
this thing is still tracking. Like your full arm movement, it can it can actually pick that up, which yeah. some of the MR headsets can't. Mike, you had some yeah. thoughts about this on Windows MR for the tracking because it also uses yeah it's mostly some of that. this uh, indeed like exactly close behind, yeah uh, I think I think the thing with this, the Santa Cruz uh, prototype is that they've got kind of cameras that are very near the edges of the front of the display uh, the front of the outside of the case I mean so it actually captures a lot of area around you like you just described whereas the Windows mixed reality platform the cameras are very sort of forward front facing so what I found was as soon as you took a controller outside of your sort of peripheral vision then it lost tracking and that was a, an issue and you know I, I get the fact that Windows mixed reality reality is uh, you know very competitively priced it's, it's a good price and doesn't require much setup but still like for me it needs the tracking needs to be perfect to have an immersive experience in my mind and that's integral so that's what I, I found that platform was lacking yeah. but I'm excited about Santa Cruz uh, and and to see what it has to offer because the way I kind of imagine it in my mind is that if you're a kid come like Christmas this year you're gonna be saying to yourself am I gonna get an Xbox Am I going to get a PlayStation or am I going to get like a standalone VR headset that can do uh, VR, you know, without having a PC to run it, you know, in my mind anyway? I feel like we're in that phase now for families that VR is like where the television was 30, 40 years ago, where it's like we mm. have one. You know what I mean? Like the family has this one headset that we would use as a family. You, mm. I wouldn't. It, this is maybe just me, but I wouldn't yeah. think if I had a kid who was, you know, between the ages of six and 16 or something, wouldn't be like. Honey, here's your new Santa Cruz. <laughs> like, well, they're not going to call it that. that. That's just a code name right now. So they haven't announced what they're actually going to call it. Because there's another code name floating around as well, and that's Monterey Bay. Monterey I don't know Bay. if you guys have yeah. heard of that. Heard of it. Mm -hmm. it could be the code name for the controller, or it could be a, another revision of the Santa Cruz, or it could even be another headset. Really we don't quite know yet. Uh, and that's because uh, there was an advertisement for Facebook Spaces, and they mentioned that the projects that the person will be working on is like Monterey Bay, uh -huh. uh, alongside some other things. So we don't know what Monterey Bay is, but uh, uh -huh. hopefully we'll hear more about it. It, it, it definitely, it definitely needs a sexy name for sure. Like we had Oculus Touch, was nice. Oculus Rift, CV1 never had like a good name in my opinion, mm -hmm. but I think that that one needs like something, you know? Yeah. Like the, the, the Crescent Bay, you know, where it's like, oh, yeah. Mm, ah. But no, 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 this is the coolest thing. I was going to say this. So, Nathan, I know you weren't there last year and you plan to go this year, which is Oculus Connect. When you're around San Jose and the Bay Area, having all these towns named after the different headsets yeah. is fucking cool. Like, that is yeah, just is. neat. You're like, we went, we went to Santa Cruz, like, on a yeah. day trip. <laughs> so, it's I'd like, I'd love to, I'd I know love what that's like. I'd love to know in the chat what people think would be a good name for the uh, the Santa Cruz, <laughs> like a final name. If we'll, maybe we'll read out some funny ones later on. Yeah. Um, but the next little bit of uh, news uh, snippet is uh, Tomb Raider Lara's Escape has released on Gear VR. So it's kind of a little tie-in for the movie that's just coming out, um, you know, the Lara Croft uh, movie Tomb Raider. Um, you know, it's a shame that this is just on uh, Gear VR. You know, <laughs> why isn't it on Rift? Why isn't it uh, on Steam? I don't yeah. know. It, it is free why. after I, all, but I just I, don't understand why I, they I just don't open so, it up. I got so triggered when I saw the trailer popping up. I was like, Hyperino. So I just posted it on Twitter. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait a second. I'm, I'm watching it like after posting it. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, Gear VR. It's probably, you know what? It yeah. probably has to do with like sponsorship from, 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 uh, from Samsung or uh, something like that. And yeah. still, there's a lot of people that have these kind of headsets. Huh? These mm. Samsung Gear VRs. Yeah. Is yeah. this out? Is this out? Yeah, it's out now. It's for free. You can download it for free on Gear VR. So you guys you know, eventually, when you get Oculus Go, you'll be able to download it for free as well. But I think yeah. uh, by that point, you're probably going to be long forgotten about uh, <laughs> this little throwaway title, I, I, I think. I got to say, it looks awful. <laughs> it yeah. does not look like something I, I'd be even interested in. I don't know. It'd be cool if I had a gear. I'd check it out just to say, yeah, it, just to see if it was. I, I would. I, I wouldn't yeah. say well, it looks I mean, awful. It looks pretty, no. pretty decent for don't something forget, on this mobile. Is, this is on a mobile phone, huh? I mean, this is. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, the game. I don't it's, care it's about something. The, I don't I mean play. looks. It's I don't not mean something looks I would play. Mm. I mean gameplay design. Like, what are you yeah. doing? Of course not. Of course not. It's, it's a trailer. It's a trailer for a movie. I mean, point, yeah, we talked about right. this with Jumanji as well. It's not going yeah. to be a game that you're going to be playing twice. Yeah. But it's yeah. a, if I had a mobile phone and had a Gear VR, I would definitely check it out. It's free, yeah. right? It's free. It's free. 
So why yeah, not? It right? It's true. a good little promo. It's more for VR. So those are positives. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So there you go. You can check that out for free on the Gear VR. So next up, we're going to be talking very briefly about AR horror experiences. And uh, a cool dude by uh, the name of Abhishek Singh uh, posted this on his Twitter just recently. His Twitter handle is uh, sh- uh, Shek It Up, <laughs> which is a freaking <laughs> awesome Twitter handle. Um, and what he's done is he's recreated the uh, infamous scene from The Ring where Samara comes out of the TV screen. Which is a terrifying thing. Like, if you've ever seen The Ring, it is a terrifying scene. I remember vividly watching it myself. Uh, but it's wait, a really wait, wait, cool. Mike, Mike, did you did you actually also remember her name, or did you? Uh, no, I that remembered up? it. No, I remembered it. You know, <laughs> I remembered it. <laughs> Samara, Samara, so, like, Samara Morgan. Ooh, Samara. I don't know. Okay. Is that a surname? Uh, but she was yeah. obviously lost down a well, and then she come back it's to also, find people. It's freaking yeah. scary. The, the way that it's filmed in the, in oh. the in yeah, the exactly. Clip, yeah, it's yeah. so oh. well done. Like with it the shaky camera. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's so well done. Yeah, just just don't start telling ghost stories, okay? Because I'm already like terrified by this yeah. whole video. I'm yeah, like, it's probably scary. Up the flashlight, like, <laughs> oh yeah, my. My reaction to this, seeing this, was, oh god, yes, I want this. Like, yeah. I I just want, I I definitely want to see AR horror games and experience them. As a guy, you you quoted it when we started, Mike, about Dread Halls, and I've done about 200 hours in that. Um, mm-hmm. I love. I love horror games now. Like, I didn't play horror games, like, at all yeah. before VR. And then I just kind of got into it because people wanted to torture me. But, um, you know, <laughs> this looks amazing. The only question that I have to ask, because it's happened before, is who's going to get hurt because they're running away yeah. from yeah. something that's not actually Definitely. there. It's already yeah. happened. Definitely. This is the weirdest ah. thing, but there was a Zombies app about three years ago that launched, and it was on the iPhone. And some kids got run over in the street because they were running away from some wow. virtual zombies. Because yeah. you look at your phone, you're like moving it around like almost like a Google Maps street view. And you yeah. see zombies coming at you and you're trying to run away from them. And obviously yeah. if your yeah. brain is focused on that, so just be careful a little bit, I guess, if these things launch. Because devs are just going to do what they can do. They're like scientists. Feck it. Yeah. Just give it a go. But I think it's <laughs> it, it really is it's cool. Uh, I think it's really cool. Seeing all the AR applications come out and I'm just I, wait, I can't still wait. wait. What's gonna happen? I can't with, wait up with, until like everyone has like those kind of AR glasses absolutely. and some kind of smart dude like hacks all of them and uploads some kind of like horror program so that everyone experiences mm-hmm. the same horror experience at the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that needs to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Zim, Zim is going to turn his whole house into uh, dread halls. Yeah, he is. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to our first topic then, and that is some exciting news. Um, I got to attend an event in Brighton called VR in a Bar, which was hosted by Virtual Umbrella. Uh, the venue uh, was a, like a gamer bar, like a kind of gamer uh, pub uh, in Brighton on the beach, right next to Brighton Pier. So it was a really cool venue. It's actually called C Side Quest, which is like C dot dot slash Side Quest. So really cool little place. So if you're ever in the Brighton area, go there, check it out. You can play board games, have a drink have a bit of cake or whatever with your buddies, play some board games together. But they were using the venue uh, to um, host some VR content. And uh, developer Curoscope, don't know if you're aware of those uh, developers, they made um, uh, Operation Apex. I keep on getting confused with Operation Apex and Apex Construct. Uh, But Operation Apex is uh, an underwater exploration game where you can go underwater and sort of learn more about sort of uh, sea life. It's it's an Um, educational experience, huh? It and is as well. just yeah. launched touch support. It did. And they've oh. just updated a, a, a free roam as well update uh, yesterday. Nice. So you Good. can free like roam and just uh, be Good. free to explore. But it's funny how they actually got together in the first place, like a little bit of backstory with them. They uh, they did a 360 video on YouTube, um, like a VR 360. And uh, it was like rendered with uh, sharks, like an underwater scene. And it went like viral, crazy viral. So it got like 28 million views on YouTube, like... Uh, and what happened was uh, HTC saw this video and were like, oh, you, you guys made this like 360 experience. How about you make a game? And they actually funded um, Operation Apex. So that's wow. kind of how that game came to be. Nice. I but uh, no, Curoscope uh, are an interesting bunch of uh, people, really. They're doing some stuff with AR as well. But they're really sort of like not just about games, they're, they're really intrigued to, but to be in uh, sort of educating people, you know, people learning stuff, uh, using VR to learn. Um, and they've got some other products as well, like AR products, like a T-shirt that you can scan mm. with a phone. And then you see inside of someone's body and you can see all the organs and how That's they cool. work. So they're working on some really, really cool stuff. But um, obviously they've got this good relationship with uh, HTC. And then HTC sent them like a Vive Pro before they even announced it. So that, that was pretty crazy. They got this in the post and they were like, 
we can't talk about this or do anything with it. So you know, this is kind of weird. Like the internet doesn't even know about this thing yet, and yet we have it. So it was a really cool uh, experience for them. Um, but they actually demoed the HTC Vive Pro at this event, um, VR in a bar. And uh, it was cool because this is actually the first time that the HTC Vive Pro has been publicly demoed in Europe. It's like before even HTC have had, had opportunity to demo it themselves, these guys are showing it off. So it was, it was nice to be like one of the first in Europe to, to try out uh, the, the Vive Pro. So um, let's just start off with uh, sort of how it looks, right? Because you'll probably see from the trailer, uh, it looks quite shiny and the blue kind of looks kind of vibrant and, and very shiny. But in, in reality, it's not actually like that. It's much more sort of um, a matte. dark matte blue. Yeah. Mm. And it's very subtle, actually. And in, and in the low lighting of the bar, it actually looked more black. Uh, and I'm kind of pleased about that in a way, because if you look at the Vive Focus, for example, it's kind of got this like really light Mattel blue kind of color that kind of cheapens it and makes it look like a toy. Whereas the Vive Pro looks like a premium product, you know, it looks like a croc, right? <laughs> the Vive Croc. You're talking about the Focus, right? Like yeah. uh, it looks it looks cheap, you know, because of the color that they've used, it looks cheap. Whereas the Vive Pro, it, it's it's very subtle. It's a real dark matte blue and it looks really premium and really nice. So that's that. Um, that's cool. Yeah. Is this so, a consumer uh, product though, Mike, that you tried? Or is it is, this a it is. dev build? No, this is the consumer product. It, it, it will likely be the consumer product. Although I have to be clear, like um, my background is obviously with the Rift. Um, I've used a Vive a handful of times. Mm -hmm. I've used a Windows Mixed Reality headset, never used PSVR. So they're, they're the kind of comparisons that I'll be comparing this okay. to. Um, Obviously, I didn't get to check out the the Lighthouse 2.0 or the new controllers because they aren't available yet. Mm. It's just the headset itself with the original Vive ones and the original original Vive lighthouses. But um, so straight off the bat, I obviously got to play um, Operation Apex. So I chucked the headset on. First thing I, I found straight away when I put the headset on was that it was incredibly comfortable. Nice. Very, very comfortable indeed. So as soon as you put it on, you you, you grab the back, which is a, a dial, and you dial it yeah. in, and it just like slowly yeah, sort of... Uh, it's the same mechanism that PlayStation has as well exactly. with like that dial on the back. It's such a nice yeah. system to like really grip it to your face. Because it also, and that's what I like about the PlayStation, once you like yeah. pull it closer, it doesn't only really yeah. come closer, but it like tilts a bit when you like mm. tighten it better. So like you get that nice little seal on your face. I like that. Completely, yeah. So I was totally um, immersed, you know, it was, a, it was a really nice seal. But what they've got at the back, it, where the actual dial is underneath it, is like a kind of shaped cushion. It's a really weird shape. It looks weird and bulky when you look at it, when you hold it in your hands. But the way it kind of cups the kind of curvature of the back of your head is really comfortable and it sits nice. really, really nicely. So props straight away for, for comfort because my previous experience with the Vive when I've tried it out at a sort of um, convention was that it was very weighty on the front it's of your face. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this felt more spread across equally across your head. Question for you, Mike, on this. So yeah. are you, do you have experience with the deluxe strap on the Vive? I think you... Never, you, no. Okay, then, yeah, because that, that was a game changer. And I think this is a similar model. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's a it's a little little different because I uh, I mean you can you can talk about it because I I still haven't tried it yet, but on the sides like the 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 headphones are way more balanced now as well. Well, yeah. the the leg strap is like a pretty like like that's the the one point version. This is like two point kind yeah. of next level. So like Mike, what, what what could you like modify in a way? You could do the back, of course. Uh, yeah. How of were course. the headphones like? How could you move them? Could you move them away from your ears or like? You know, uh... yeah. So it's got like a, a a strap on the top, just that sits on the top a bit, like the Rift does, like a kind of Velcro. But this on the on the Vive, it's kind of a, a slidey sort of like um, toggle um, that sort of uh, makes it tighter and looser. You've got the dial at the back as well, but also you've got adjustment that you can bring the the headset closer and further from your eyes. Uh, to so maybe like say if you rocked it all the way out, it would maybe give enough room to wear glasses in it, for example. Oh. Um, so you can dial it a bit closer to make it a bit more closer to your eyes. So you've kind of got that wider field of view. Um, you've also got like obviously IPD adjustment. But one thing that I did find that was a little bit off-putting when I first put the headset on, like comfort-wise, great. But what it's got is um, nose flaps, right? Yep. 
So what, what I, I, I can't remember if I had this on the original Vive or not, but uh, I certainly experienced it on the Windows Mixed Reality uh, headset, which was the Dell, and it had these nose flaps. So they're there to um, prevent any light from coming in underneath. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, with the, the rift, it's completely open. So you can, you know, if you look down, you can see your feet and stuff around yeah. you in the I room. I hate that. I hate that, by the way, about the rift. Like, right, that I, right. I constantly have, like, the light coming. I mean, when I'm playing a game, it's, it's a little bit less because you get so immersed. Yeah. Well, if I'm, if I'm, if the first thing I notice when I put it on is that it's not completely black, and I don't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in really it. like in it, and like yeah. the light bleeds in from the from the bottom. Yeah. So with with this, it does completely block out the light. You know, it was very dark in this bar anyway, but it, it did seem to block out the light really well. But it kind of works on a, a design where like three pieces of plastic kind of overlap themselves and it they call it a petal design. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine like a flower has got petals and they kind of all overlap and when you put pressure on it they kind of open up a little bit like yeah. uh, like a like a flower would, right? So when your nose puts pressure on the flaps they kind of open up a little bit, but it is still always touching your nose and that uh, that that uh, for some reason uh, I no, immediately noticed that. Yeah, but uh, but that's yeah. only because I'm a Rift user and I don't yeah. ever yeah. have that. PSVR. So. The, 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 I, I'm I'm really curious to see if they have a similar problem to PSVR because, as you mentioned, it's this kind of opening. I'm wondering yeah. how it how easy it is to correct that if you. I don't know if you can feck it up because on the on the PSVR, I just showed on on senior. You have these like these nose right, flaps. Right, right. If you get the if you get your nose in the wrong orientation, you can get them like sliding <laughs> up the wrong side of your nose. It can be a little they, bit annoying. Yeah, um, they will yeah. like cut a little bit into your nose as well if they're yeah, in the right Yeah, but I know spot. what you mean. Like if you're not used to having something touching your nose, no, and that's then all true. of a sudden you are. I agree. And it's all the time. Yeah. I can see yeah. why it would be annoying. It, so I, I think if you're used to that already, it's not going to bother you. But just as a Rift user that doesn't have anything touching my nose, I just felt it a bit. Strange, yeah. that's all. But I quickly forgot about it as soon as I was in, you know, the experience and in, in, in exploring the world. I all right, I all right, Mike. Resolution, resolution, resolution. Ah, <laughs> don't. You're, you're jumping the gun a little bit there, Zim. I will get to the resolution, which is obviously <laughs> what everyone wants to know about. I'm kind of building it up. For okay. okay. Um, but, like, let's talk about the audio because um, the, yeah. the audio, obviously, you know, now that with this, you've got the audio built in, which I think is a super smart move, and I, I think every headset should have this as standard. Obviously, you can remove them if you're really, uh, you know, sensitive and you, you're an audiophile and you want to use your own headphones, then fine. You can take them off, use your own. But I thought the sound sounded great, you know, like... Easily comparable with what we have with the Rift. Yeah. Uh, I don't do know what it's. Use the on, do you use the onboard Rift? I do. Yeah, I think they, they work well. And like in previous, uh, previously I've tested out different replacement Rift headphones, I remember. and none of them have been as good as the Rift original yeah. ones. So they uh, were they, like on ear or uh, over ear. So the, the, they're actually cups, like they're ple they're like pleather cups uh, with a void <laughs> um, in there. That was a beautiful so, sound. Pleather whereas. Cups. Um, Whereas the Rift has like a bit of material and is kind of just sits on, these kind of do sit on as well, but they're more rounded. They don't fit over your ear, but just on your ear, but they're round in shape. Um, they cancel another uh, uh, noise. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry. sorry. No, 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 one no, no, one no, at a time. Fa everyone is fanboying right now. Terrible, Can I go first, please? Part, Can I go first, please? Okay, Hello. go on, Nathie. No, but uh, is, is it like uh, canceling the noise well enough? Okay, so this is kind of interesting because the front of the headset has two microphones and I think one of them is to pick up ambient noise around you to try and uh, noise cancel it out. But uh, yeah, I, you know, it was a busy bar, there was a lot of people around and I didn't, I didn't like uh, notice any of the hustle and bustle around me. I was just so immersed in, in the game and, and the sound of the game that I didn't even consider it as a, an issue. So I guess it must work well enough for me not to notice. Did you have Could your it be that the there's some the uh, noise cancelling? <laughs> what was that? Yeah, the noise cancelling I'm worried about because if there actually is active noise cancelling, you can have yeah. this feeling of like audio pressure and I yeah. hate that. So no, is it they active noise cancelling? They weren't tight on my ears, so they no, no, do no, no, like... No, no, no. Audio no, pressure noise is canceling. different. I'm talking sound oh, pressure. Right. They, so use, a, you use, they active... use a different frequency. Sorry, yeah. Go on, Rowdy. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't notice that, but that's what I, I like... The, the noise of the bar wasn't clear to me. Do you know what I mean? It didn't distract me from what I was doing. So not that I, I, I consciously made a decision to say, oh, I can't hear it, but I don't recall being distracted by anything going on around me. And I was just mm. focusing on the game audio. So what, what I was saying was that the, the Vive uh, Pro has two microphones built on the front. And my guess is that, not that I know, is that one of them potentially is being used for noise cancelling. I don't know that for definite. It's just my best guess. 
Because okay, we got so a question just, from. Uh, go on. We got a question from uh, Paradise Decay. If uh, he, he said, like, did you notice a big difference in screen quality? <laughs> you jump in the gun, Paradise Decay. Yeah, you're getting straight Be patient. To the point there. Ah, Be nice patient. Try. Uh, nice try, but I will come to that very shortly. I wanted but, um, to say one thing here, Mike, on that point. Yeah. So just so people can differentiate, there's a difference between ambient noise, noise blockage that's passive. In other right. words, you have over-the-ear ear cups that naturally, just based on the materials around your ear, naturally are yeah. blocking out ambient noise. Then there's yeah. active, and active is usually driven. Again, it's usually powered, so usually batteries right. in the headset or charge or something. It's actually right. actively trying to noise cancel. So that's like if you've ever seen a waveform trying to do yeah. the opposite waveform. Yeah. The issue is that you end up with what's called a DC bias. So there's like a level of noise that's, it's like a, a signal to noise ratio buffer. And if right. you're an audiophile, you'll hear that. And that's what right. I don't like about active noise canceling. Mm -hmm. So you've gotten me very interested now whether or not the Vive but, Pro is yeah. going to have But the, the thing is, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be very logical if they would go for active noise canceling. Because I can imagine that it, it works very well mm -hmm. in, for example, a plane. Yeah? Because you can first analyze the sound around you. You can construct that waveform and then make the opposite of it. But yeah, it's yeah. going to be much harder in, like, for example, like a bar. To uh, yeah. to get noise cancelling there because the yeah. the the frequency of sounds is so much I, bigger in variety. So I don't I I don't I, think they. I, I, I don't I don't I don't think cancelling. so too because I I checked their website and they have all the info on there of what the specs are and what it's going to do and at the audio part they have they don't mention anything about noise no. cancelling. If it was in not. there, they yeah, they they I'm were going not. to try to sell it. I'm sure. Uh, so uh, I don't uh, think it's. And the thing is as well, like the ear cups don't cover your whole ear. Like if you can see these headphones mm. here, they, they, they cover my whole ear and seal it almost. So it doesn't work like that. They're much smaller. So a bit like, uh, I don't know if you've ever used a pair of Razer uh, headphones, but they're kind of smaller circles. So they just kind of sit on your ear. You know, it, that that's what it was like. But the good <sighs> thing I did notice just while I'm on the topic of audio is that you've got uh, controls now on the, um, the ear cup to turn the volume up and down. And then on the other ear cup, you've got a button to mute your mic. So you've kind of got those uh, controls readily accessible to you, should you want to use them. Wait, wait, wait. Um, are those controls on the earphones? Yes, yes. Actually, so on the earphone what itself. what happens if you, you take those them. off? They're a rocker. Yeah, if you take those off, you're not going to have control over it, yeah. But there is a, that you know, you can obviously replace it with your own headphones. There is an audio jack that you can plug your own headphones into. Um, but yeah, you have got control over the headphones that are on there at the moment. What was the position yeah. of the audio jack, Mike? Uh, it, it's at the top, I, I believe, um, and it, you can just pull it out, put your own uh, jack in. But yeah, it's, it's, it's sitting on the top of your of the headset itself. Mm. Um, right. So tracking. Wait, we got one more. We got one more question. Uh, one more comment here from the chat here. Actually, okay. is that the uh, bird person said that I think that the noise cancellation is for the mic. Uh, so, right. like, if you're mirroring your audio to an external speaker, the noise from the external speaker won't be transmitted on your mic, which yep, is a good That would make sense, yeah. 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 Like I say, I wasn't 100% sure on it, but certainly when I was in the bar, I didn't get distracted by any external environment noise mm -hmm. around me. That's all I would say. Uh, the, the sort of noise cancelling thing was just a guess from, from my part, so I wasn't 100% sure on it. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of tracking, obviously, they were using the old lighthouses, and tracking was flawless. Obviously, using the old uh, controllers as well, that worked absolutely fine. Uh, I didn't get a chance to check through the pass-through cameras, Unfortunately, I did ask. Uh, I really was curious to see what that would look like. Uh, the guys from Curoscope said that it kind of looks a little bit weird. They have tested it themselves. Kind of looks a bit like radar. They said like it's kind of like a, it's not it's not like a, a stereoscopic uh, pass through in in their mind. But they said it could just be the fact that it's still early days. No one's really uh, got to use it properly yet. But HTC were quite keen to say, you know, we've given this to developers to use. So maybe they'll showcase some ways of actually using it in the future. But mm -hmm. it's a shame I didn't get to check it out myself. But so I don't know the true facts on that firsthand. Question, we've, got a, we've got another um, question. When you were doing this, what were you playing? Uh, Operation Apex. That's what I, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Are you that sure? Was Wasn't it Apex Construct? No, it was Operation oh, okay. Apex. <laughs> Don't confuse me because I will get it wrong. Um, but obviously, it was hosted by Curoscope, so they were just showing off their game. They wouldn't, they wouldn't play anything else. Roddy, so. what was the question in chat? Yeah, we, we one more regarding audio. There's a person asking uh, Mike Philippides uh, if uh, the audio was 3D. Uh, I don't know if that Spatial. is relevant for VR. Mm. Because we already have a 3D. No, but spatial audio is a little it, bit different. I don't yeah. know if Mike would be able to pick it up, though. Z Zim's, Zim's right. It is spatial audio integrated into the Vive Pro. Right. But to be honest, it wasn't something that I really noticed. 
you know, well, why, like it was. I don't understand why would that matter? Because why would spatial audio matter? So spatial Johnson, audio, can VR? I describe it? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, so sure. spatial audio is like this, right? So right now, if I have if I have headphones, which is just two audio sources, right? And I tur say there's a raptor here, right, growling at me. If I turn yeah. my head like this to look at it, um, the, there, there's actually onboard. Usually, there's onboard chip a chipset that actually will will process and. Uh, everything from the reflections around the room uh -huh. of how it's going. So you get mm -hmm, yeah. 3D positional audio. So if I'm moving my head in 3D space, it's not just that I'm like a fixed point and turning my head on an axis and, oh, uh, you know, the sound's coming from this direction. But instead, you can actually get reflection. It's more complicated, actually. It's very cool. Okay, 3D but, spatial audio. Okay, so, 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 so basically like what you're saying... Rift demos. Yeah. So basically what you're saying, it's, it's audio that is uh, uh, tracking itself. Yeah, audio track. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 3D yeah, spatial. Yeah. It's the same but as yeah. positional tracking that already? from the DK2, but audio. So but it wasn't it wasn't audio? noticeable. Like it, I wasn't like I wasn't listening to it and thinking, "Oh, this is like way different from anything else I've experienced." It just felt the same. But the devs would have to have used the audio pipeline in the API yep. that integrates with the headset. So that's the issue. Sure. I don't think there's a lot of titles out there that I know that specifically sure. support 3D spatial audio. <laughs> you have to latch into the API, yeah. I think, for like, yeah. I know Oculus have it. And yeah. for instance, some of the intro demos when you got your CV1 utilized mm. it. And you could tell if you were listening for it. But I haven't, okay. I haven't honestly been able to hear it in many titles. So let's talk about what everyone wants to know. And oh. that's the display and the resolution, right? So field of view is the same 110 degrees that you're used to with the Vive and the Rift, okay? But, and you still get that kind of goggle vision. You know, if, if the, the headset is pushed all the way out, yep. you still kind of get the, the edges of the goggles, right? But if you do pull it in, it is a lot closer to your eyes, so you get that kind of better field of view. Also, we have VR cover to save us all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like Rowdy, Rowdy asked some questions before, because I, I said to Rowdy and the guys, like, what do you want to know about it? And Rowdy was like, uh, what's the sweet spot like? And that was the thing. Like, as soon as I put it on my head, I did have to fine tune it to get that sweet spot still. It wasn't like a bigger sweet spot area. You still need to really sort of adjust it. Okay, now I've got the sweet spot, tighten it up, now I'm in place. But if you look to the far left or the far right, you can see the ridges of the Fresnel lenses, just like you can in the Vive or the Rift, mm. and text is blurry. Uh, on the edges, so you know that was the questions that you had, Rowdy. Yeah. Um, but just you'll remember the display is a, a slightly improved display. You know the original Vive is 1200 by 1080 per eye, whereas the Vive Pro is 1600 by 1440 per eye. So it's a little upgrade. Uh, it's actually the same display as the Samsung Odyssey. Mm -hmm. So what I would say is that when I was looking at text, it was super, super sharp, super clear, and really, really easy to read. So anything when there was text in the menus or text on items that I was looking at or reading, it looked great. Can you compare it to the Rift? It, it, way better than the Rift in oh. terms of like, reading text, way better than the, the, the Vive as well with my limited experience with it. Uh, but that's- I still, sorry, go ahead. I, I would just say, but that was just with text, okay? So everything else kind of looked, Better, but kind of the same. Like if you took the Pepsi challenge and had them both side by side, the original Vive and the Vive Pro, you'd be like, yeah, the Vive Pro looks way better. But if you tried them like a week apart and you'd never tried them in between and said which was which, you might struggle to to say in your mind which was the better one. Do you yeah. know what I mean? In terms of gameplay. Marginal like, benefit. Yeah. yeah, like with text, like hands down, hands down, it's going to be way better. You will know straight away. But with a game, I'm not quite so sure. Um, and then we but come back to my original point, content is king. No, we need and, content, and we don't need I, I, new I totally headsets. agree with you and I'll come mm. more onto that later on because it is really important. But I think for, for productivity uh, and industry applications, this is gonna be like the obvious choice, right? Because uh, yeah. if you're doing a lot of work around text, if you're in the industry, like if you're Jaguar Land Rover, for example, and you wanna show off your new car in a, in a 360 way to a, a, a you know, potential buyer or something, this developer. is of course, yeah. If you're a developer, this is of, like textures yeah. work and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, this yeah. is of course the headset you're gonna buy, right? Yeah. But um, so, Right now, rumor has it that HTC will be releasing the Vive Pro as a standalone headset as an upgrade path to current Vive users, and then release a full bundle later on in the year with the new 2.0 lighthouses and the new controllers. Go on, Rally, go on. Uh, we got a question uh, from Mike Philippides. Uh, again, yeah. what about the screen door effect? Yes, oh, sorry, screen door effect. Yeah, that's a good point, dude. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, it's greatly reduced. 
It's greatly reduced. It's still there, but it's greatly reduced. That's give what I would say. Give us a percentage, Mike. Go on, give us a percentage. What would you say? What kind of improvement would you say from... You can compare against the Rift because you're... Yeah. Vibe, you know. Not that I ever really look for it again because it's it's not something... I don't either. Yeah. You know, it's like... Uh, the thing is, the, the Rift to me is like an old pair of slippers, right? You, you, you just slip it on. It's so yeah. comfortable now. You, you just forget everything, you know, the, the limitations of the hardware. So it's only when you really think about it that you notice these things again. But I would say that I, I did look for the screen door effect, and it is still there, but it's greatly reduced. So I'd say it's probably reduced by another 50%. Um, so it's, it's quite a, a bump. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a bump a up. Number. That's good. Yeah. Did we also yes. talk about God Rays, by the way? Yeah, good question. So God Rays are an issue with the the Oculus more so than the Vive, right? Anyway, um, but I was playing an underwater game and I didn't have any any times where there was just a, like a black screen with white text, and that's normally when I notice it in the in the Rift. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really have the opportunity to see that because I was just in this mm. blue sea environment yeah, the whole time. That title wouldn't really show yeah. it off, I'd say. No. Yeah. No. But um, like I said, like uh, HTC are saying that they're going to launch the Vive Pro as a headset on its own, right? For an upgrade path and yep. industry, and then as a bundle later on. And that's where I think this kind of sits. Like if you've kind of made your choice already, so most people have, whether it's PSVR, Oculus, or, or, or Vive. If you're a Vive owner and you've got a Vive set up, you're happy with it, I would say definitely go for the upgrade. It's, in my mind, if you are an enthusiast level, you've got the money to afford it, and you want to be on the what, cutting edge, then go for it. What price, right? though, Mike? What price are you saying that on? This is the thing. We, d we don't know this yet. No, no, we no, don't no. know. What I'm saying it's... is, what, at what price would you pick the... Like, if it's 599 quid, you going for it? But this is the thing. Like, I wouldn't personally buy this, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. And, yeah. and so, so I've already made my choice, right, in terms of what camp that I, I, I've chosen, right? I've chosen the Rift. For me, like it, for me, the HTC Vive Pro isn't compelling enough for me to leave the platform that I've already sort of decided to align myself with. Fair enough. Right. There's because, disadvantages too. Yeah, Sorry, of, of course. But th there's there's positives and disadvantages to every platform, right? No platform is perfect. And like, don't get me wrong, it is a fantastic headset. I, I totally yeah. agree. But for me, uh, like, who's heavily invested into the Rift already, like, I'm going to need something like next level for me to jump to another platform. The, and HTC there's a big Vive hidden Pro. cost though here. This is the thing I was trying to make the point of because the big hidden cost is right. Bitcoiners out there are fucking up the prices of graphics cards right now. This is a mm. higher resolution. You're going to need a beefier rig to drive that higher Quite. resolution. Don't forget that. So Quite before possibly, you yeah. go splash out on this, be ready that you've yeah. got money to splash out on a, an upgrade to your graphics yeah. card as well. But like, let, let, let's be clear. Like, um, you guys have got all all the headsets, right? You've got like a, a Rift, you've got a, a Vive, you've got a PSVR, and Nathy obviously has <laughs> got like a Windows Mixed Reality headsets as well. Like, I would say that the people that have the multiple headsets are the minority, right? You, you've normally aligned yourself with a, a platform of some choice. And that's all I'm saying, that if you're a Vive user already, and you, you've got the money to afford it, like whatever price it may be, and you're at the cutting edge and you want it the best of the best yeah. at that time, then of course, go for the, the HTC Vive Pro. It's like those think, people that buy a new iPhone every year. Exactly, right? But, exactly. but also, you know, we shouldn't forget, and I said this when, when the Vive Pro got announced, this Vive Pro is for the industry, for exactly. businesses. Absolutely. So if you are a consumer, you can also buy it, but it will still be pretty pricey because uh, companies are going to buy like maybe 10 of these. At the yeah. same well, time, not already, just one, right? you know. Um, so, yeah, they... the, you know, just keep that in mind. Of course, this is going to be a, a nice little upgrade if you are a long-time Vive user. But it is, it is. A, a headset that is getting sold for companies, for businesses. Mm. Um, so that will be, the, the, the price range will be a little different because of that. You know, yeah. they will so, not think like, oh, uh, it's too expensive for consumers. But that's yeah. the thing, it's not for consumers. No, so, but well, I would say it's for the enthusiast consumer. Like, if you're an enthusiast level and you've got the money to afford it, then yeah, go course. for it. Like, you guys, yeah. you guys are likely to get one, right? You've already I, got a Vive. I, I actually have cooled off on it a huge deal. Um, the reason right. I say that is, and it's the point that Nathy just made. I think this is going to be marketed specifically for industry, and 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 priced for industry. The last time they did that, it was double the cost for the headset. But you got to remember, like Nathy said in a previous episode. NVIDIA do the same thing with their graphics cards. They have graphics cards for industry. Doesn't stop 
like no, pro that's... gamers and enthusiast level uh, gamers to buy those graphics yeah. cards like a Titan X or a Titan V, chuck them in their rigs and play everything at well, max. I mean, you, you know? can. You're free to do that. You yeah. Know? But yeah. still, like this is aimed for for uh, companies that want to buy this in like a, a bulk uh, format, you know, where they buy but, like a few or. But let's put it this way: if I had got a Vive initially instead of the Rift, right? It just I don't know why I ended up choosing the Rift at the time, but I just did. If I had a Vive right now, I would buy one. Put it that way, because if Oculus did the same thing that HTC are doing right now, I would buy the Oculus equivalent. Because even it depends not, on the price, though. What, what if it's a thousand dollars? No, I would, because like I just want to. I, I'm an early adopter. Wait, 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 wait. We're all early adopters, right? And. And I'm personally, I'm kind of one of those people that likes to be on the edge of technology. So as soon as technology releases, I tend to go out and buy it because I like to be a guinea pig, right? I like to test it out before anyone else does. And then I like to talk down the pub and say to my mates, this is what you should try. This is what you should like. I just yeah. am that kind of person. The thing but is, I'm, I'm not like not everyone's that. everyone's like that. I mean, yeah. I, li I like novel technologies. I, I like yeah. that. Like I was the first one, one of the first, I was the first one in Belgium to actually buy an HTC Vive. I, that, mm. I, I, actually, I called them and asked them how, how many it was. So I like novel things, but there needs to be a certain degree of novelty that I need. And yeah. for me, like I, I, like I said before, like I don't need at this point a new headset. I want to play better titles. I want to play more titles. I want to be, I want to have better content and a better headset will not call it for me for that. Yeah. Of course, if also, the improvement is so big, yeah, yeah. that it, it blows the other one out of the water, but I'm not getting that impression from you. No, so if, if that doesn't happen, exactly. then I'm not, I mean, I'm not really convinced that I will get one then. Then it will highly depend on the price. So this is the thing, right? For me. Because whilst I'm using the Rift, I never think in my mind consciously like, I wish I had a, a better resolution display. I wish the yeah. field of view was greater. I'm normally just so immersed into a game that I'm just enjoying the game. But I do yeah. think in my mind a lot of the time, I just wish there were more great games. And uh, uh, so I align with what Rowdy is saying at this point, that content is king and without great content is kind of irrelevant. But I do admire what HTC have done. And I think they've Definitely. made a, a fantastic headset. And I think it is great. And people that in the industry mm -hmm. and people that are at the pro enthusiast level will love it. I, I, I but think I they applaud will. that. I mean, I applaud yeah, the, the I, way I, the, the steps yeah, totally. that they're making forward. Uh, that, it's a bold move. It's that. a bold move. Yeah. yeah. But, but for me personally, like my personal opinion on it, it's not compelling enough for me to switch platforms. But I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge your your position on 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 Mike the Vive owner. So if this was Mike sure. the Vive owner, and you said yep. what I would do is I'd pay, if you had to spend twelve hundred quid to go it's not, upgrade. I, no, 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 I, 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 so yeah. like if you're sitting there, and you own nothing, yep. and you can spend four hundred quid to get a Rift, full yep. fully board, fully loaded. Or double that price to get a Vive with the Vive Pro and trackers and controllers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you choose to do that for that difference? Yeah. There's, there's such they, a minimal. They, you know, there will and, always be the person that does that. They would just I, say, of course, what is, what is the best one? What is the best one? I, I want agree. the best thing. I know, I know. But, but what I, what I take from you, Mike, is that you're not the kind of guy to just throw money out the door for no reason. That you're not. Well, it in has that been known. That's, <laughs> that's, that's why I put that. You know. So the other thing yeah. is, for all of us as content creators, and this is something that people are going to forget. If, if we don't mention it, you can you can actually be very selfish in this upgrade. And what I mean by that is you're going to get better resolution and your viewers yeah. are going to get worse performance. You're going to have worse FPS because you're trying to push higher resolution on this device. What is the benefit that is actually coming to your audience? Well, yeah. But this is the thing, like, this is what I said, like, uh, if Oculus did the same thing, I would buy it because I'm invested in their platform and I want the best thing. So regardless of cost, I like I, I know you, I know you said 1200 pounds, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere near that. I think the headset like standalone will probably be between four and 600 pounds on its the, own. But including the controllers and everything on else it, no, you need. No, on its own. Yeah, of course. But that's why I'm saying if you've got a Vive already, then it's a great upgrade right. path. But like, like, you know, if I think about it for people that, that, that own a Vive for a very long time, I think this this is fine. You know, it it depends on, of course, yeah. the 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 level of of like, you know, how much you like the vibe and how much you use it. If you use it every day and you're still not putting this thing on the shelf, not bad. Yeah, but if you are like, percentage. why why are there no good games? Why why are there no great experiences? And this thing is on the shelf for like a few months now. Yeah. Why would I buy a new headset? You know, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. There are people that play mm -hmm. every game that comes out on Steam yeah. and they yeah. love it. And, they, and they, they go on Oculus Home and they, they buy all the games there too. But yeah. for me, it's like, you know, I, I bought the Vive for a very like high price when it just came out. It was like 
freaking expensive. Now it's um, yeah. a lot cheaper, but still, it's still fairly expensive. So if I look at how much I used it since I, I pre-ordered it, it's yeah. totally worth it because I played enough, like I, I, I put enough play hours in this headset to upgrade it now. If That's I'm like, you know, us, I eh? still haven't experienced enough enough good games or experiences, yeah. then why, you know, it's like there's so many reasons why you wouldn't or would do it. And of course, Rowdy, you're right. I'm 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 doing a review channel, so I'm torturing myself with like like three, four games a day. <laughs> but but you get my point, right? There are people of out course, there like I, I got it on my shelf. Where are the good games? You know, make a good game first, then I buy your headset. You know, and, and yeah. that's the thing, like PlayStation had a very had a lot of nice games you know they had a great great lineup oculus as well they had lone echo etc etc last year like playstation and oculus had great games htc they don't make games for you they don't really make games for you they ha they made a few just a few but i haven't seen like bam titles where you're like whoa okay now we're talking so if, if that if I happens put myself yeah, if I put myself in the consumer perspective, yeah, and I don't own any headset and I don't own any VR game, the thing that I would be buying would be the PlayStation Pro. Yeah, and of course. Yeah. The PlayStation VR headset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, that, that, that would be a wise choice because that's the, the, the cheapest I, barrier to entry and the quality is great, right? Yeah. yeah. Very comfortable um, as well. But There's it, a lot it, of people, I think, was it Kaz, Kaz and Cherry who said uh, that, that they thought that the PS... PS4 Pro, um, along with the PSVR, was the most comfortable package, even beyond the Rift. I think yeah. the Rift even, is, but that's just me. Even, even though that Rift and HTC Vive are a far superior product, I think that we still are not pushing the limits with these kind of headsets. With the current that's, hardware. That's the no, thing. I agree. With the current hardware. I, I, yeah. I would love, I would love them seeing, like, I would love them them see making more games for the HTC Vive. Like yeah. what Oculus does, they want to push the yeah. boundaries. Uh, yeah. PlayStation, Sony wants to do that too. But HTC, I, I've like they, they, they have Vive Park, and yeah. that's it. And, 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 <laughs> and, and they, on they that made point a few as well. small games, and they were kind of cool. But yeah. it's not like like a triple A experience you're pushing to it. So if you sell no. this Vive Pro, then be sure like okay, so we also got some very nice games, and then you kind of think it's worth it. But right yeah. now, as long as there are no good games or experiences. Yeah, and this is Don't the thing as well, it. like yeah, uh, it goes back to the Windows Mixed Reality platform, right? If they'd come out of the gates with like a Gears of War VR or Halo VR, like a proper game, yeah. or a Forza Motorsport VR, they would have knocked it out of the park and they would have sold yeah. way more than they did initially. Yeah. Um, but, but the thing is, with this, like a lot of people talk about resolution and, and all this, how important it is. I don't think it really is because let's yeah. like, Nathan, you've got the um, Samsung Odyssey, right? It has the same display as the Vive Pro, practically, in terms of the resolution. But you're not jumping yeah. to use it's, that platform all of a sudden, no. are you? No, 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 no. Like the resolution. And that's my point. Like, uh, if there's like a big difference, then maybe. Yes. Like what I had with my DK1 going to the DK2 and then playing Lucky Still for the first time, I was like mind blown. I was like, wow, yeah. this is like yeah. the biggest upgrade I've I, ever I seen. Think, I think I have the biggest upgrade going from Homido to the freaking HC Vive. <laughs> of course, <laughs> but, but again, like I played my first experience on the Oculus Rift DK2 was Lucky Still. And that yeah. was like a, a whole new concept, a whole new world I was stepping into. So the game is as important as the resolution of a headset. If that yeah. combines nicely, then it's yeah. fine. But as Rowdy more. said, if there are no games, then this headset is kind of worthless and you can still yeah. go for the casual vibe because it's not going to matter. You yeah. know, yeah. you're Although not going to be people, more immersed. We do have people in the chat agreeing with you, Mike. We have Paradise Decay saying, tell Zim that I agree with Mike and I would buy the Oculus Pro <laughs> if available. And then also Steve Lee says, I will buy it. I have no <laughs> preference to any kind of platform. <laughs> Sure. And uh, that's how the chat uh, is, is okay. going yeah. at the moment. So just to, just to quickly summarize my thoughts on the HTC Vive Pro, I think it is a fantastic product. I think that it's it's great that they're, they're you know, reiterating the hardware. I think it's great. If yeah, you perfect. want the cutting edge and you've got the money to burn and you're exactly. already invested in the Vive platform, yeah. then go for it. Um, yeah. But for Agreed. me personally... I'm, I'm really interested in the, in the paradigm shift here. First off, Mike, thank you for sharing, for, for taking yeah. the track down to Brighton. Yeah. trying it you know because that that's a trip right that's a journey so thank you for yeah. doing that and also for bringing you know your thoughts and views to this because it's really good when you trust someone's opinion and i trust yeah. your opinion um yeah i, I it's always good to hear that because it's almost like you're living through them uh and and i would say it definitely does affect my position on this i want to ask the other guys the same thing sure when the HTC vive dropped right we learned about it several of us said we're definitely opting into it I'm definitely on the fence right now. 
about whether or not it's a good idea for me to get one. Uh, mm. What about you? Where are you guys sitting now? Post Mike's feedback. Me? I, th I think everyone knows my opinion by now. I mean, I want, I want, I don't care about a new headset. I've said that before, and I, 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 I say, I'll say it again. I don't. I mean, of course, if the improvement is so big that it's like a mind-blowing difference, then I'll be the first one to jump ship. You know, definitely. Yeah. If if they come out with a with a headset that that beats all the other ones, then I'll be I'll be going for that one. But yeah. I don't. I it's not gonna. I mean, also for my channel, it's not going to improve the content that I make if I have a better headset. No, it's just mm -hmm. going to look nicer for myself. So, for me, no. I'm, I'm, if I have to choose between better games or better headsets, I'll choose better games. Yeah. First off, and they think. Yeah. No, I I agree on better games. You know, for me, it's like from from a com consumer perspective, from a personal perspective, I would say a, a, a casual vibe is fine. You know, it's not really necessary. Since I'm like using the, the the Rift and the Vive and all those headsets like every day, I'm going to buy one. You know, I'm yeah. going to get one because I I, I want to, of course, be always like on, on top of the game. You know, I want to be sure. using the best hardware. Yep. But that's more from a business perspective. You know, since this one is for the industry, since I'm 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 running a company myself. You know, I'm like, I need this one. But from a consumer perspective, yeah. Show off some nice games. It's now like 2018. I haven't seen uh, uh, any announcement yet for this year. Uh, E3 last year was very silent about 2018. Uh, we had the big bang with like Fallout and Skyrim and Doom. Mm -hmm. yep. And then bam, like we're, it's going down a bit. So as long as you don't really hear much about all the games coming out. But this is not something just two new games that are nice. No, this needs to be a, a, a constant flow. A level. You yeah. Know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, a stable level. If that level is stable and you feel like you can trust that 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 level of like like mm -hmm. the lineups, it's, are... it's improving. Of course, if you see the games that are releasing That's now, it. they're of a of a higher quality than the games that we were playing in, in twenty seventeen in January and February. Of course, huh? I mean, let, let's be clear about that. But it, I think it's good to to put the bar high and to expect yeah. like those kind of experiences that yeah. blow your mind away like lone echo did for me for example oh, so I, I i want more of those kind of experiences that really like grip you and mm. that you that you, you 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 go to school you go to work you say holy heck you know what i experienced yesterday is like this yeah. and this and that you, you that you tell about that that's for me no, what i it. want more that's it when at I this very moment games. we are frozen in time with the games we 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 see like they are nice, but they are not really getting that impact as like Rowdy's calling it, where you can really tell people, I was there, I I, I felt for the characters. I feel like I built up a friendship in the game. I, I, I went into a whole new level of like a story, you know, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. No, and that's, totally that's VR, you know, on its best. Yeah. And that's not but a resolution or anything. It's like you really being in that world, being a part of it, you know? I think we will get there. I think we will get there, but I think yeah, VR for everyone has has been a bit of a slow burn, and I don't think it's it's okay. picked up the momentum that we all yeah. wanted it to straight away because we've mm -hmm. experienced it. We know what the potential is in it, but for people that have never experienced it, they don't understand the potential that VR has. That's true. But I'm so, cool with that. I'm, I'm absolutely cool, cool with, with the fact that it's been way slower ramp up than I was expecting. But it's also not gone backwards. It's not reverse. Like, yeah. no, no, you know the yeah. old 3D TV comparison? Like, yeah, VR yeah, is going know. nowhere. Because <laughs> once you've done it, it's like, well, now I just want that. I keep getting people yeah. coming to me and saying, I just got into VR, and it's like, I can't play 2D games anymore. Because no. this is all no. I want to do. I watch my movies this way. I, you know, it's <laughs> just like, and I love hearing those comments. And it's yeah. still amazing to feel the hype of someone who hasn't done this before absolutely and tries yeah. it for the first time and there's still people it, like yeah. that i can't believe yeah. it four years in and you know people are still experiencing vr for the first time they're lucky it's magic it's magical watching someone do do vr for the first yeah. time you know like uh, i think uh, there was a there was like a guy in the bar last night and i don't think he'd ever tried vr before and the sheer look of wonder oh, on his face was just so like yeah. beautiful yeah. to that's watch amazing. you know that's amazing. yeah it is the, the chat is pointing out that uh that we i think all of us know that but we we Probably don't have any comments more on that. That uh, Bird Person is saying that Valve is working on three VR games. Oh, please, Valve. <laughs> Just any. Paul, Paul Half Life Left 4 Dead. That's what I want in VR. The Holy <laughs> Trinity. We already had the discussion, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a previous yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, please. 
Gabe, but, uh, so we, we've kind of uh, been going on about the Vive Pro for a while now. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's we move. stop fan, let's stop fanboying now on, on all yeah. the you know stop. <laughs> yeah. So let's move on to uh, our next topic. I don't know if we'll be able to squeeze in our third one, but we'll try and get through this one. Uh, so this is the Fit 360 neckband camera. So this is a uh, a, a camera that sits on a uh, like a, a band around your neck and can capture 360 video for when you're going around your normal day. So it's kind of a bit of a weird product, but as we're kind of moving forward with VR and 360 video is kind of uh, you know moving forward a little bit, people are recording more and more 360 content. So what they're aiming this at is like people that are vloggers, you know, people that want to share their content with their friends or live stream to like Facebook or YouTube or Twitch or whatever, and show people about what's going on around them. And the kind of cool thing about this, as opposed to other traditional 3D capture cameras is, you're not holding something in your hand, like, uh, and holding it up in the air, like you're some sort of like master of the universe, like He-Man style. You're, you're just like wearing it on your neck. And like, it's not quite uh, uh, unobtrusive because it's still like there. It kind of looks a bit weird and a bit techy because you're wearing it. But it works quite well to get the kind of 360 perspective from your head height, which is kind of nice. Um, but what this uh, device is, it's called the Fit360. It was actually a Kickstarter campaign, uh, which started on the 8th of January this year. Uh, they actually released their, they actually reached their backer goal in less than 20 hours after launching the Kickstarter campaign. So they did pretty well straight off the gates. Uh, and the campaign ended two days ago, and obviously they, they hit their goal. So this thing will become a, a, an actual product uh, on the market in the future. But obviously the first initial batch will be going to the people that backed it on the Kickstarter campaign. Yeah. Uh, they also showed this off at CES, uh, where it won an innovation award for digital uh, imaging, which is kind of cool. Uh, and the total funding by the end of the sort of whole backing period came to three hundred and eighty-one thousand uh, dollars, backed by about nine hundred ninety-nine, uh, nine hundred ninety backers. Um, but the thing is, this thing is quite expensive. Like uh, it's four hundred bucks, just under four hundred bucks for a three sixty camera. That I just don't know whether it looked good enough for me. So if, if you check out like the website for Fit three hundred and sixty. You'll see that they do some like videos, like the one we're probably showing right now. Yep. But if you actually look at the real world use of this, and you can use it, you know, scroll around uh, uh -huh. to the 360 video, you can clearly see the stitching. So there's like a grey, yeah, blurry area with the stitching, and I was like, hang on a minute. I like the look of this thing. It's kind of cool, but this looks crap. Like the product that it outputs isn't quite good enough in my mind, I, especially totally for this price. That, this thing is yeah. is probably double the price of what it should be. But the fact that yeah. it exists and that this concept is there is really good. Because like three or four yeah. iterations down the line, this could be yeah. really awesome for content, yeah. like for content creators and stuff, just to like walk about. Because it's so much less intrusive. It's kind yeah. of doing what Google Glass failed to do which was yeah. allow recording of 360 degree capture or just video in a normal yeah. conversation setting, in an environment that you're in. I watched a few of their yeah. videos and as you said, the stitching is rubbish uh, on, yeah. on the edges because there's yeah. actually places where people will like disappear and then reappear and mm. the stitching isn't great. But yeah. as, a, as, as a piece of kit, it seems pretty cool. It doesn't look like, yeah, uh, like it's very much the kind of thing you'd like throw on. Oh, I'm going to go out for a jog. Yeah. I'll put no, it on. exactly. You know, the but. thing, the thing with these kind of things is that the first question I always have, regardless of the stitching, how is image stabilization with this kind of stuff? Yeah, well, because you're running if around. You, if you wear it around, it looks a little yeah. bit flimsy. It's going to be moving a Bouncing. lot. It's like, going to move. How, That's a good point. Because a good point. A lot of the 360 cameras that I know, they have like serious gimbals to make sure that you know you have like that smooth yeah. tracking experience. Yeah, like this. Like, yeah. You need like a gimbal, yes. yeah. But, yeah, like that. But also, but if there is, on there. but also like if you um, uh, if you stabilize a video, you already need to uh, trade in quality because yeah, you're it requires it quality. Mm -hmm. So so uh, like you can stabilize into the software. That's very nice. It, it works. It can work because it then kind of blends in the the video. Mm -hmm. But it, it you need like much more quality than as a 360, and and like most yeah. 360s are in great I, I think quality. Uh, so I think people in the chat want to want to try and use it for mixed reality because uh, Paradise DK is suggesting that everyone just wears like uh, green tops all the time so you can like uh, filter <laughs> it out. Yeah, <laughs> key it out. Green okay. suit. But what I do green think this there's one thing this this thing could be great for this 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 like uh, uh, necklace this this bracelet um, and that is 
I've seen YouTubers uh, stream their life every day where they walk yeah. around, they go to the McDonald's, they, they buy something or they talk to some people, they go to parties and they go to all kinds of countries and they travel and it's really a part of their lives. Then if you use this, and you can just share it with people instead of like holding your camera all the time. Right. Uh, it's a lot easier. Right. So then in VR, you will have like, you can just uh, join the person every yeah. day and watch that live stream. But still, I think that 360 needs to have a little bit of depth too. So yeah. No, I, I totally agree. And like, um, you know, this the way this works is it's got one front facing camera out of one of the strands and then two rear facing cameras. Mm. Um, but what I found when I was looking at the videos of this is it would have been cool to wear something like this at the event last night because as I was walking through the bar and there was tons of like people from the industry yeah. there and VR enthusiasts, people could have watched that and go like, oh, that's that dude, that's this dude. And you would have felt like you were there with me. So that would have been really nice. So I, I agree with Rowdy in that, you know, this kind of thing would be cool to use in the future, but we need to reiterate the hardware and make it a little bit better, I think. Yeah, yeah I think for, uh, for streaming purposes, the one thing that um, I would say on the behalf of, on behalf of you know, Twitch streamers who use IRL streaming um, is that the battery life in this thing, there's no way you're getting five hours of battery on this. I mean, this is gonna be mm -hmm. a half hour, hour, two hours, maybe max when you buy it. I, I can't imagine that this thing that looks relatively lightweight and plastic housing, mm. that it's going to have a lengthy battery. Do we have any battery stats, Mike? No battery stats, no. Um, but you've um, you've live streamed at events before using a stabilized camera and a, and a yeah. phone, right, to, to, to stream it to Twitch. Okay. Could you see yourself using something like this in the future, like if it was better and the stitching was better, do you think? Because I... it is, you just kind of wear it rather than holding something, so it's a bit more natural interacting with people. The thing I think it's, I don't know that I would, the reason I don't think I would use it is because the quality of what someone's seeing. I, again, I think about the quality of the, the kind of 360 capture, mm -hmm. and it's like, do I care, do I have a platform where someone can watch me and pan around and look behind me and stuff? They really care about the subject that I'm talking to more than yeah. the environment. I think it's really good for people like, again, I'll call it Reality Check VR, because he would do things where he's like walking yeah. into, a, into an yeah, event. Yeah. To capture that like entry and exit, to make that your intro video, like just with the gimbals. The gimbals are really good for doing like a cool pan or something like that. That's what this is for. This is for like that little snippet of what environment am I in? Make my viewer feel like they're there with me. Like you said, Mike, and maybe, maybe capture a little tidbit of like an interview or something, but I would actually use this and the normal streaming on top of it. So I, right. I would use this as like the capture, the cool thing that the other stuff is gonna miss. But then again, yeah. you're probably gonna capture in your camera, you know, in the view, the gimbal that you're using or whatever. Yeah. So. I'm kind of wondering now, like if you flip the video up, are you like looking up some person's nostrils the entire time then? <laughs> <laughs> you have, have to like wear it in a really funky way. Neck. I have yeah, to wear out, it as a beard, a beard necklace. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I'm interested to know, have you guys ever uh, backed any Kickstarters or have you had any sort of horror stories from backing anything on Kickstarter before? Yeah, me. I, I bought those um, uh, Air Babies, the, the crazy, crazy baby Air. No, no, those like Bluetooth head, head, headbuds that I, I wore them like one time and they were right. rubbish. They were absolutely yeah. rubbish. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the sound quality was really nice, but uh, I had like a Bluetooth uh, connection with them and they dropped yeah. like every 15 seconds, it dropped like, and it was impossible to listen to music. It cost me like 100, 100 euros or something. Yeah. And I anyone anyone else? Are now. Uh, any I, issues? I typically buy after they go to market. Um, right. The thing mm. in the UK, Smart. there was a company, and I probably have it, I'll fish it out in a second and show it. Um, they were double A batteries with a USB header to charge them. So the ah, okay. benefit, it's lower capacity. So it's like yep. three quarters of a normal AA battery in terms of capacity. But you literally have a little elasticated pop-off top, mm -hmm. stick it into USB jack, charge it up. Charge it. Why is that good? That's good for international travel because I can yeah. just charge it anywhere. I don't need to plug it into a wall. I just find a computer or, you know, I'm in an airport and I stick it into something. And then I've got my, my camera batteries or whatever to use on the go. So that's really, really cool. That's handy. And it does work. It works oh, as brilliant. described. They're really good. I'd, I'll recommend them. Um, I can't remember the name. I'll, I'll try to find it. They're just in the corner. Yeah. There. Okay, because uh, I've, I've had some bad experiences with Kickstarters. I've, I've had good and bad. Like, uh, I don't know if you ever saw the Zungle Panther uh, sunglasses, but they were like uh, sunglasses that looked like uh, Oakley uh, frog skin glasses, so kind of cool looking glasses. 
But they had Bluetooth built into them and uh, they had bone conductive um, audio. So you can sync your phone and then the, the, the audio just goes through the bones in your head. No. And uh, the, the whole concept of it was really cool. I like the idea of it because you could still hear around you what was going on, but you had the music like in your head. Um, but in reality, the the execution of it was very poor, and the audio quality was really bad. And it was kind of a shame because so many people were hyped about them. I remember um, Unbox Therapy being like very excited about it, and then really slagging them off in, in a video. So uh, mm. that was one that was a real shame. And my wife as well. She's a uh, she's back she's back these uh, cocoon headphones just recently, where um, you can sleep in them. They're more comfortable when you sleep because uh, she likes to listen to the radio when uh. she sleeps. Uh, but they, they they were supposed to be here here about six months ago <laughs> but they're still not they ready yet so freaking deadlines though don't they th this is the problem with kickstarter so <laughs> although we think you know personally i think this is kind of an interesting product and maybe good in the future once they've reiterated the hardware a little bit and improved the stitching uh right now it seems like a bit meh i would give it a miss <laughs> i'll just show you there uh, mike it's called usb yeah cell. sure um so it's called usb cell sorry i don't have the focus on my camera but it just looks like a standard um, kind of battery. It's by Moxia, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, you can get them in the UK and you can get them on Amazon. They're they're just a little bit pricier than not, I suppose, like maybe fifteen percent pricier than a normal headset. And then you end oh, up with uh, a USB on the top. Oh. They're really handy for travel, so I I definitely yeah. recommend those. They actually have one as well that's a triple A battery that where the the USB header actually kind of like folds out. Uh, These guys oh, wow. are just kind of one piece, not very many moving parts. I've had them for probably seven years. Oh. Bloody, Wait, so they actually, they actually are batteries then as well? Yeah, they're just a battery. Yeah. Just chuck, I could chuck that into my Oculus Touch A battery controller. with a, like a USB connector on top. Yeah, yeah so, so you, you can charge them with the USB connector. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I, I never really backed something, but I got triggered once, and we also spoke about this in the podcast, <laughs> and it were like uh, Jamie Heinemann's uh, VR <laughs> electric shoes. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I don't know why, but it sounded so silly. I was like, I want to, I want to try that. Uh, <laughs> Did you back but that? the thing is, no, 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 I didn't, I didn't. I'm not really a big fan of like, Good. like backing anything. I was gonna I'm say, usually... where's your survival kit? Uh, you know, the, the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. But I like usually also because I'm, I'm running a YouTube channel, I don't want to be the example that backs something, you know, because then I might back into something that is totally like garbage. So I usually yeah. it's up to like people out there to do that. But for me, it's like I wait until the product comes out. Maybe they want to send me a, a sample and then I can see if it's, it's really good or not. But yeah. usually I don't want to because then I already voice my opinion in a way by backing it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I've got course, actually yeah. an answer for you here, Mike, um, which is that the biggest so the kind of backer that I wasn't sure if it was going to backfire on me or not was the DK2. Because right. Oculus oh. had just been ah, recently acquired. Yeah. Um, I had missed out on kickstarting. Uh, kick, sorry, I was going to say kickbacking. That's not right. Uh, unbacking the DK1. Right. It was a developer headset being sold yeah. to developers and you know the whole thing at the time was a little bit like well if you're not a developer you really shouldn't be buying one um yeah. nate you'll remember <laughs> this from back in the time that was definitely the vibe uh, you know some there were definitely people out there like shunning enthusiasts who were picking up dks and yeah. and what i what i said to my wife at the time i was sitting there like teetering on it it's like will we will we buy one you know uh it had just launched i happened to be working from home for the day and i just like thought about it for half an hour and i'm like you know what? I don't think Facebook is going to fuck it up <laughs> that fast. <laughs> These guys have had this in the shop. It's probably going to be fine. You had to wait yeah. five months for it. And when it showed up, well, that started all of this. But, you know, it was yeah. it was a good buy in the end. But I was nervous because it was a big chunk of change at the time. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. And uh, I'd imagine people that back the Pimax right now are sort of wondering <laughs> whether they did the right oh. thing or not. But I guess we'll find out soon enough. Yep. Um, but yeah, we, we've gone on now for about an hour and a half, so we're going to have to cut the last op the topic, but if you've got any questions in the chat, chuck them in now while I sort of wrap the show up. Uh, obviously, we, we covered uh, the HTC Vive Pro, my experiences with that hands-on, and uh, the uh, Fit360 band and some other like n little news articles. Oh, um, I've, I've got something I want to say, Mike. It's about the, go, go for it, go for I it. hinted last week at this time. Uh, this is like the catch-up time in our, in our cast, isn't it? But it was yeah. about the Assetto Corsa related release. Um, yeah, of course, because you were hyped about that, right? Oh, yeah. I was very hyped because I was expecting that we were going to get, and I'll run the video now. Um, I was expecting that we were going to get a, a set of Corsa 2 uh, because Project Cars yeah. and Project Cars 2, probably their biggest competitors out there, have been out there for some time. And it's really a good time for them to kind of make a stab into, in, into VR. Very interestingly, 
Uh, they released a set of Corsa Competizione, which is a GT style car, um, fast paced racetrack cars. And they're showing a couple of things in this clip. They're showing real weather. Uh, they're showing night tracks, which they don't have in the current game. So there's a lot here to be excited about. It's not what I wanted um, in terms of a package. It seems to be a sponsored standalone uh, racing game. Now, the very mm. interesting thing, because people like Road to VR and stuff picked this up, um, the page for the product originally said it was going to be VR supported, and it got pulled hours after the announcement. So now oh, we're wow. all wondering, will it have day yeah. one VR support? Will it come later? It's in the Unreal Engine. <laughs> it should be capable. But yeah. honestly, I'm sitting here going, well, you know what? I'm just going to sit with the set of Corsa because it's got all these mods, all this that longevity, a great community. Why would I act? This feels a lot like um, Dirt Rally, kind of like a single player package, but I'm sure it'll yeah. have multiplayer and all that. But it's yeah. hard for me to stay excited about this, I have to say. Yeah, of course. Damn. And like, you know, there is a dedicated fan base of people that love racing simulators out there, especially in VR. So they would be keen to know whether this is going to be supported or not, right? Yeah. Um, we should have this as a regular part of the show, like Zim Talks Checkered Flag Corner or something like that. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Happy to do it. Yeah. Happy to do yeah. it. So, so looking at the chat, uh, CMDR uh, uh, says that he also bought a DK2 back then and he wasn't a dev. Ha <laughs> ha. Badass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But he did, did play with, with Unity a bit though. So yeah. that's nice. Living on just, the edge. Uh, kind of like try out some stuff and then dive yeah. into VR is really cool, of course. So, yeah, a man after nice. my own heart. Living on the edge. I love uh, it. They are rare. DK2 users, you know, you don't, you don't yeah. see many. And, and DK1 users are dinosaurs, you know. <laughs> like I, last week I posted on my Twitter saying uh, I'm, I'm uploading videos about VR for four years now and people were like okay you're really old and you know and uh, yeah you're really old <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah so any other questions nice. for the chat before we wrap this one up there was a question uh, from Rogdor said uh, ch uh, check out uh, no, sorry, that's not a question never mind they're okay. asking you to check out Yala VR actually I came across something uh, you guys might be interested in as well I don't know if anyone any, did any of you sail no 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 but I know what you're going to talk about yeah, it's something called Regatta <laughs> VR. It's like a, an open yeah. sea, sail around the ocean type thing. I'm going to check it out. They, they keep me up and I'll see what it's like. But uh, it looked really neat because, you know, when a category that's out there gets fulfilled, like a game mm. drops or whatever, and you haven't seen something else like that. I haven't seen anything sailing-wise like in VR. Have yeah. you guys anything? No, no. But maybe it's because there's no market for it. <laughs> it, might, it might also be rubbish, right? Like maybe it doesn't yeah. make for a very good experience, yeah. but we'll see. Yeah. I, 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 I do, I do want to see Rowdy, by the way, sitting in that Yaw VR. He will yeah, be a little yeah. noodle sitting in there in that little walk band. You know, a little from, noodle, from, yeah. Riding, riding roller coasters. <laughs> yeah. Talking about the regatta thing, uh, maybe I want to go up and climb into the crow's nest and be like Captain Jack Sparrow Mike, <laughs> you know, for the day. That would be kind of cool. But let's wrap this one up. Okay, so just to remind you guys, it is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show, live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. Tune into the show live at 4 p.m. in Europe, 3 p.m. in the UK, 9 a.m. in Central US. If you missed the podcast, you can catch up with it every Sunday. I upload the whole show to my own YouTube channel, Virtual Reality Oasis, or check out the audio-only version, which is available on Google Play Music, iTunes, and on SoundCloud. Thanks again for being part of today's show. I really appreciate all the comments and people joining in uh, with the conversation about the HTC Vive Pro. I know you guys were really excited about this one. So thanks for being part of the show, and uh, we will see you on next week's episode. Thanks again, guys, and bye-bye.